Hello again, welcome back to the channel. Now I want to talk to you again today about the Move Shoot Move Nomad Star Tracker, which I have here. And the reason I want to make this video is to show you some little modifications that I've made, some adjustments if you like, to this tracker. Now I've been using it for quite a while now. It's a really good star tracker. I definitely recommend this little baby because it's so portable, small, lightweight, and it just works really well. But Having said that, there's a few things that I've made a few modifications on. So let's start here on the base. This is the Move Shoot Move base. Now I'll take it off so you can have a bit of a look here. You'll notice there's a couple of differences to the stock unit. Firstly, I want to show you that I've taken out totally these little adjustment knobs. Let's see if you can see those. They used to go in there. And the idea of those, there's one on either side, very much like the Skywatcher Star Adventurer base, where you just make fine adjustments. But I've never liked this system. I don't like it on Skywatcher either. So what I've done is totally taken them out. It's made the base smaller. And all I use is a little rotating base on the bottom. Now I've got a couple of different types of rotating bases. On this small move, shoot, move, man, I've used a newer brand, so that's a pretty cheap one I bought on Amazon. I've also used the Faisal brand, which here in Australia I can't find anywhere that sells it, so I've had to buy it from B&H in New York. Uh, but I'll find on this little uh, Move Shoot Move base, the smaller one seems to be doing the trick quite nicely. So I've just taken them off totally. So you can see it's a much more compact unit without those bolts sticking out. The other thing, and it's very difficult to show you this because I've, I've made the adjustment, but with this uh, adjustment here for the up and down, as you can see there, making an adjustment here, it goes up and down, right? And when you tighten this up, it's supposed to stop that. Now, there's a little bit of play in there, or there used to be, not anymore, because what I did, I took this apart. There's a couple of washers in recessed little bevels inside there. Well, all I did was put a thicker washer in. It's not rocket science, uh, just to give it a little bit more grip when you tighten this down. And now it's as solid as a rock. And you tighten that down, and even though there's a little bit of play here, that has no bearing at all, because that's just because the gears are meshing. But this is actually tight, so it won't slip. It was doing that a little bit before, and I wasn't happy. So uh, a very minor modification. Uh, the other thing that I've done here, which again, hopefully you can see this. Let me get close up. I want you to see that I've put a little bolt here on the Arca Swiss plate. Now you're probably thinking, why would you do that? Well, the reason I did that is, well, let me put this back on here and I'll show you. Um, like I said, it was working fine and it's not really a design flaw. I wouldn't call it that. It's just that for me, I was finding uh, that when I was putting the tracker on, let me just show you. So the tracker goes in there like that. It's just an Arca Swiss plate. I was finding that if you're not careful and you don't do this up uh, properly or accidentally undo it, the whole thing can fall straight off down the other end. Now, one thing I will tell you, if you use an Allen Wallace V mount or the Z mount plate, that does tend to stop it from doing that because it hits on that little uh, uh, tightening screw there. But nevertheless, I didn't like it and I always felt nervous because there's a camera on here, there's all of the device and everything else. So now that I put this little screw here, it stops it. It can't physically fall through. And so now off peace of mind, if I accidentally, and look, I know I'm not the only one that's done this, you're fiddling around in the dark and you accidentally undo the Arca Swiss plate rather than some other uh, ball head uh, adjustment, it's really easy to do, then it can't fall off. Sure, it'll come loose, but it cannot fall off. So that's another one of my little adjustments that I've made. Uh, I've got a, I've showed you this before, but I've got a low profile ball head on this. And the reason I have a low profile ball head, and it's a panorama ball head as well, if you look closely, you can see you can also turn it this way at the top there. And that just gives you a few more compositional tricks up your sleeve. Obviously, you can still move it down at the base. And of course, it's got the ball in there as well. So of course, I use the Alan Wallace V mount. I really like this. I never use the Z mount, always use the V mount. I have no 
need for another hinge. Uh, any of these hinge plates can potentially add a weak point or a flex point. So just having one, I think in my opinion, is a better option. Uh, I love these because that screw down the bottom also gives you the ability to keep this surface here flat. So when you're using a star tracker, you wanna keep the camera base as flat as possible throughout its, all its movements. So just getting that flat and after a while, when the track has been moving, it's, it, it sort of goes on the angle like that. Well, between shots, I can just put that back to the top again, recompose my shot, and I've got a nice flat base. So once again, the thing is nicely level, and I, I don't have to worry too much about uh, the camera putting all its weight off to one side too much. Now, obviously, you're going to have that happen because whenever you use a star tracker, the rotation of the mount itself does indeed cause the camera to be on an angle. Now, if you're facing up, high like this, obviously the camera's got to be back on an angle. But I still like to keep that base as level as possible. A lot of the times you'll be shooting, for example, the Milky Way Galactic core's often quite low in the sky and you don't have to have it facing straight up above your head. And so that V-mount uh, plate really works exceptionally well. Now, I want to show you uh, another thing that I have done using and this by the way i want to give credit to a follower of my work here on the channel uh, a chap called mark egan i've got to get that right mark thanks very much for this idea because mark contacted me talking about the msm gear and uh, trackers and so forth so what what it is basically you've seen me use the skylabs plate here where i'll just stick that on there put my phone in and do my polar alignment so my phone basically sits in there let me just turn that around so you can see so the phone goes in there uh, i do using sky safari 6 plus or 7 plus i use either of those they both work brilliantly and i polar align down to the northern hemisphere because i'm here in australia in the southern hemisphere it works brilliantly just to line up the north celestial pole now if you're in the northern hemisphere you can use the exact same method to line up the south celestial pole. You'll get the same polar alignment because they're both exactly the same. All right, so why am I talking about this? Well, Mark had this idea that what, why don't we use the, the bracket that comes with the MSM, but use it in the same way. And I thought that sounds like a good idea and I, I actually got to give it a go. So this is what it looks like. Now I've taken off a heap of the other stuff that was on this. This, I don't use a laser. I don't use any of those other bits and pieces that were stuck on that. There's a little bit that was on the end of it. Got rid of that. It's a really compact little unit, as you can see. And what we have done here, thanks to Mark's idea, is we have put an Arca Swiss plate here on the bottom of this bracket. So the idea is to get a 90 degree angle. So that now fits down there into the top plate like so and you can see now that I can put my phone in here so let's have a look now you'll have to play around a bit with the phone depending on what you've got I've got a cover on this phone but it's got to be on a proper 90 degree angle so let's have a look that's what it looks like so basically it's mimicking my Skylabs mount as you can see here the Skylabs mount looks like that and this MSM bracket has been designed so it now slides into the Arca Swiss plate and I've got a 90 degree movement. Now, what problems might I encounter with this? Well, the first and most obvious problem is getting uh, everything to line up in exact angles because uh, unfortunately the, this bracket from Move, Shoot, Move could probably do with a little bit better tolerance as far as air machining. Uh, this little ball head on the end here, I couldn't get it to exactly 90 degrees. So I got out into the workshop. I'm sorry, move, shoot, move. I, don't shoot me on this. But um, I had to make a bit of adjustment. So I got the drill out and drilled out that hole to make it actually swivel into a 90 degree position. It was a few degrees off. And now it seems to be working quite well. So all I'm doing is just doing that up nice and tight. The other problem that you might encounter is getting this level, because if that's not level, then you'll be off in a lateral um, 
way, you know, a few degrees. So what I've done, I've done some testing to line it up with this. Now I know this is accurate. This is a very simple device, but uh, I know it's accurate. So what I've done is some testing where I put my camera onto this in the backyard and my phone and lined it up and then done the same with this. And I've found they are very, very close. So in other words, I've done this nice and tight. Oh, and the other thing I wanna show you here is uh, it's got the standard screw underneath here, but on top, I've screwed another one down through the back of that Arca Swiss plate. And the reason I did that was to stop it from flexing. So once I've got it level in the, in the orientation I wanted, I've done that one up and that one up, and now it cannot move at all. It's stuck on there very, very tightly. And of course, I just put it on there like so, do it up, and I have a very compact little base to shoot. Now, the problem I have here uh, with the uh, standard uh, arrangement with the Move Shoot Move phone holder, the way that they have designed it is that it fits on using some of that stuff that I've just taken off. <laughs> it basically fits on the back something like this. Okay, but the problem with that is you've got to get down here and look up there. And I'll tell you what, look, I'm not getting any younger and I think it's a bit of a pain to actually do that. It's much easier to actually use this. Now, of course, you're not uh, polar aligning the, the mount itself. Sorry, the, the tracker itself, because that's not even on here. I'm actually polar aligning the, the base. But that's exactly what I've been doing for years with the Skylabes. And I do that with all my trackers, Skywatcher Star Adventurer, Star Adventurer Mini, uh, the, the Move Shoot Move Nomad, uh, you name it. I've got a heap of trackers. And I found that to be a really easy compact. It, it only takes two minutes, honestly, to polar align using your phone, as long as you use the right app. Now, a lot of you are using PhotoPills Spot Stars. I've never had great results with that. Look, it works and you'll get close enough. And if you're using wide angle lenses, close enough is good enough. Probably once you get up near 50 millimeters and so forth, it's probably gonna be not as good. But I found this method, certainly using this, and now this to be much more accurate. Cheapest chips, I'm using the stock plate that comes with the MSM Nomad. By the way, I love this phone holder. The adjustments on these two knobs are really, really good. So. MSM have done a great job of that. So it's just a matter of getting this mounted here. And well, as you can see there, my modifications, nothing groundbreaking in any of this. And I know a lot of you have tried different methods of uh, phone holders and plates and all sorts of things. That's my two cents worth. So I hope you've enjoyed that little video. I'm still out there producing uh, nightscape photography images. It's winter here in Australia, freezing cold at the moment. So, um, but I am looking at a road trip pretty soon. So until I see you on that one, you have a fantastic week and let's have a chat down the bottom in the comment section if you've got anything to say about any of my modifications. All right, I'll see you later.